Hey guys, welcome to the next smoke and flame quick tip. Now this one is all about lens distortion inside of smoke. And uh, uh, for this particular tutorial, it's going to be using Mocha Pro um, rendering out UV maps, which again, wasn't possible until uh, the UV plugin came about. So for this, we're going to start with Mocha Pro and then um, export uh, to smoke. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm just in Mocha, I'm just going to go file, new project, and I'm going to choose my clip to import. And this is the map you guys will have access to. I'm just going to set it to one and one because all I care about for this is the distortion. Frame rate, I'm just going to switch to 25 because I know it's 25. I'm just going to press OK. I'm just going to press yes. So this is uh, the distortion grid that's been shot. And, uh, you know, it is it is what it is. It's a distortion grid, nothing too fancy. Um, and if we go back to the clip, and we check it out, we see it's a weird res too. It's 1280 by 675. Um, and that's something to keep in mind in a second. So I'm just gonna go to lens. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just gonna press locate lines. You see, it gives you a really quick grid um, to just get the uh, distortion grid happening. So um, if we pull down on this, you know, it does what you'd expect. I'm gonna pull it back somewhere around here because I like what I'm saying. So I'm just gonna press N and it's gonna give me a new line. Didn't let me, so I'm just going to grab and select here, press new line again, and just grab and grab. Press new line again, I'm just going to grab this top row, and you just do that just by clicking. So it's a little cumbersome, but it gets the job done, and we're nearly there. Okay, and one more, just new line, just for this top row, just to help Mocha out in establishing a lens distortion and a couple more clicks. And there we go. Now the first thing we're going to do is go to the distortion model and change this just to one parameter. Um, that's because this is just a normal kind of ordinary uh, distortion uh, model. It's just a, I think it was shot in the 24 mil lens, so it doesn't need anything fancy like a two parameter or an anamorphic one. So I'm just going to stick to one, turn on calibrate center and click calibrate. Now the first thing, just to see how this is working in here, just to really just preview this, I'm just going to click this little guy here and it's going to give me a quick preview of the undistorted grid. And that looks pretty good. So um, up here I can go to the right file, which is our source and we can see the source. And then if we go to the undistorted, we can get a preview of what it's going to look like once we comp this because we're not actually going to render this out of Mocha. Now, the first thing I want to do is go to my export lens data and click on that. And I'm going to keep my format at the TIFF with the double F extension. And the first thing you'll note is in dimensions is telling us it's going to spit out 1338 by 705. And in a normal situation, that's great because it's compensating for the lens distortion and the, the cropping that's going to happen on your image. But in smoke, this is not what we want. And I'll show you why in a second. So I'm going to keep this at the undistort. I'm just going to go save. Actually go back there and choose where I'm going to save it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go to my hard drive and just choose my lens workflow and hit choose. And the first thing I'm going to render my undistorted. So I'm going to click save. And then I'm going to go to export again and go to distort and click save. Now, if we tab over into smoke, we can quickly say here's our here's our grid just like you'd expect. It's going to fit that up. Now, if I go into a uh, connect effects and we bring in the the UV data and I go to read file. Okay. So here we are in the lens what we just spat out, which is a distortion and an undistortion map. So I'm just going to Shift select those and press load. And it only brought one in, which is fun. So I'm just going to go to read again and grab the distortion map and click load. You see we've got a distortion map and an undistortion map. Now using this workflow, you see if we go to the node bin and press M and grab a matchbox and we grab the 3D uh, UV tool that we learned on the last tutorial. And I press shift alt, so that's going to be my input and alt one more time and I'm going to use the undistort and then press F4 and just control escape and we'll look at this on the right. If I press F1, F4, you see it's doing what you'd expect. Um, but you know, let's compensate because we do want that oversampling which it gives us. We switch it to same as input two, 
right? So you'd think, okay, I'm going to duplicate that and shift alt output of that and then alt one more time the distortion map because you didn't want to distort it back on top of itself and you see yes it's uh doing what we want the the res is right but obviously we need to now crop down to 1280 by 765 so if i go to fx nodes and then grab out a 2d transform and shift alt that in and go to custom and we go 1280 and click on the height and we'll go 675 um you see it's doing what you want but we're still overcompensating so if i click to our source and to our output you see it's overcompensating and the main thing here is we want to keep scale one to one when we do operations like this and that is purely because of the overscan from the uv map and this will still happen even if we change the input res to match the tiff file so how do we counteract this? And it's uh, luckily it's pretty easy. So I'm just going to command tab back into Mocha. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my clip just to refresh my memory. And you can see our, our settings on what our actual source width and height is. So it's 1280 by 675. So I'm going to go back to lens, go to export, and then go to understore it. And I'm going to click on that and I'm going to go 1280 and press enter. Shouldn't have done that, 1280. I'm going to go by 675 and press choose. I'm going to do it again and go to store it and then press save. Now I'm going to tab back into smoke. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to swipe bottom left. And I'm just going to keep this set up here and go to read file. And I'm just going to back click and click refresh. And if I swipe to the right, you'll see now these are the right res. So I'm just going to shift click and press load. And it didn't let me again, so I'm just going to grab up here and grab the distortion now and click load. Now, the important thing now is, again, these match our source clip that we're going to be under Storting's resolution. But uh, the main thing is now we need to compensate using this guy. This TIFF guy here is going to help us compensate. So I'm going to grab a 2D transform and just press Shift Alt and then press F4. And I'm going to change the resolution to custom. And I'm just going to pull, pull back on the width somewhere here and pull up on the height somewhere there. Just to give it a bit of room to kind of breathe. I'm going to swipe to the bottom and I'm going to grab the same thing. So I'm going to duplicate that, pull this out here and then press shift alt. And that's going to be my input. And then alt one more time and the undistort is going to be my output. And if I press F4, F4 you can see. And if I switch this back to input one, which is that weird res that we just created. You see, it's doing exactly what we want. Now we can test it again. So we'll go Control D, Shift Alt, and that's gonna be our input. Alt one more time, and then we wanna distort again. You see, it's putting back the distortion, but now the key is, if we grab the res from this 2D transform, which is our input res and do con Command D, and then Shift Alt him in to the output of the matchbox, and we go into a two-up view just to show this and compare it properly. If I click on my source right here and I'll just fit this up and just press fit and then click on my output, you see it's doing exactly what we want. It's one to one when we apply the cropping again, there's no scaling. Using the other method where it's oversampled from Mocha, we would have to upscale and introduce more sampling, which is what you don't want to do. Um, now, this is a very, very basic implementation of uh, the lens distortion workflow. And obviously, uh, after the first undistort is where you would then do your comping in this line here. Um, but this is purely to show the, the do's and don'ts using the Mocha uh, UV map to smoke and flame workflow. Uh, well, that's it for this quick tip, guys. I hope this is really useful and uh, stay tuned for more. I've got plenty more coming.